Today I have a brand for you that actually was asked quite often already to review, but I just never got the chance to. I'm talking about BQ and what I have today here is the BQ Aquarius X Pro, which is the latest and greatest phone. It just came out even if, because I think I'm one of the first one that got my hands on it. Of course, in about a week or so you will get the review, but today it's all about my first impressions, my very first impressions of a BQ device in general. So let's talk about it and check the design build quality. And I have to say, this phone is a little bit more expensive than some kind of maybe like premium mid ranges at around 380 euros, but it is an absolute premium mid ranger. Maybe not quite in specs, and the only thing that could be even more so premium could be the more compact design. Because if you compare it here with a 5.5 inch, like for example the Xiaomi 6, you will see that it still, after all, is a little bit bigger. But what it just makes up for it with the amazing design. Yes, I have to just say this since I said it's also about the LG G6. I'm not a biggest fan of the device getting actually a little bit wider towards the back. Since this one is though still a little bit more compact, it feels still okay, but this is something that I would still prefer not to have, but it is fine. But it's things like the, for example, absolutely nice glass back with the nice curves, as you can see here, nice subtle curve that puts it right. Still, though due to the edges getting wider, I think actually other way around, it still feels even better. But the rest, absolutely amazing tactile buttons with a nice meaty click i like that also the glass doesn't feel cheap at all it doesn't feel maybe quite as solid as a mi 6 or a s7 but actually better than something like an s8 so quite good the fingerprint reader i have to say does vibrate which i am not the biggest fan of in general but it works reliable it's maybe not the quite fastest one if the screen is on once, you can see it works fine. And the most important thing is that it's very reliable. So I'm actually fine with that. The buttons are placed very nice. The overall design and especially the aesthetics look nice. Something that actually a lot of people, I guess, will complain about. So let me just know, is the black border around? On the black version that I actually wanted to review, I don't think this would be an issue, but for some people, this still is a thing. It is definitely obvious. I don't ever care about it, but I know a lot of you do. Other than that, we have a little bit of a curve on the top which is nice and the overall in-hand feel and especially this premium feel with the sturdiness and absolute high quality build is absolutely top notch. I will go around the device later on in the review because the most important parts are covered. The buttons, that is something that I have to show, are capacitive with the home screen looking a little bit different, but that's kind of their logo. So I guess that's okay. We have the back button on the left and the recent app button on the right and it's not reversible, which is a little bit sad because it's just a software thing. I don't get why this is not possible. But the same thing also goes for the display because we don't have any extra options. As you can see, we have expanded brightness and I have to say this display seems super bright. I will have to actually measure it for the review to know how bright, but I'm using it at 10% now. And I just have to say it absolutely is a looker because it is maybe a little bit cold in terms of white, but the colors seem nice. The overall quality feels nice. And there's actually not a lot of IPS clothes, so I'm really happy with that. The speaker just real quick. It's bottom firing. It seems quite loud. The quality is quite good. I will have to check a little bit more. And I need some daily use tasks. Same for also the headphone jack. And yes, I should have maybe turned off the notifications, but I guess this is fine otherwise, because I would actually say, let's already talk about this performance because this is already using, and this is my very first Snapdragon 626 device. And everyone who's seen any review of me for a Snapdragon 625 device knows what a huge fan of those I am. And it didn't really change. Even though I have to say, this doesn't really feel any better than the 625 maybe marginal and I will have to say maybe after a few more days of use how it compares but like after half a day if I wouldn't know it's a 6 to 6 I would just say it's the 6 to 5 which is absolutely solid though because as you can see with 4 gigs of RAM it is also performing very good and I actually have to point out one thing there is a BQ Aquarius X available as well which is a slightly watered down version but actually very lowly because the back isn't out of pla of metal it's plastic but it seems to be quite high quality plastic it also has three gigabytes of ram and half the storage of this one and a little bit of a lower quality cam but that's pretty much it and therefore you save like 80 bucks i wanted to review both so i definitely know the differences but i i can already tell you that this is from what i see definitely well worth 380 but maybe the 300 dollar version of the aquarius x even maybe offers the better value. That's something that we will have to see. But what both definitely should offer is a great, amazing battery life with 3,100 milliamp hours of battery and the 626 that should be at least just as efficient as the Snapdragon 625. 
this should be a winner. Absolute great battery life. Now, let's actually do one thing. What I usually don't do when we talk about software is the camera because I don't really have to show much about the system because it's using a pretty much stock Android-like design. I'm using a different launcher here, but we can quickly actually change that. That is no problem here at all. As we can see here, this would be the default one, but not much has changed. As you can see here, we have and that is actually kind of all highlight already 7.1.1. And it is pretty much exactly stock Android. It comes with no bloat, not really a query software or BQ software because it even uses like the stock photos app and so on. Quick settings look pretty much the same. They are resizable. And it's pretty much like 99% stock Android. The one thing that is different though is the camera, which we will take a look at now. Just in terms of features, what we get, of course, you can see on the side, so this is just in German, not actually in English. You can see photo, you can switch to video. For motions, you also have, if we switch that, we can see we have time lapse and we have slow motion. I will definitely check this a little bit more in the review. I did some sample shots and the camera definitely seems capable, especially the front facing cam seems very nice. Panorama is also available. We have up to 4K, we have even 1080p 60 frames and the manual mode and so on should all be there. I will definitely go more into that as you can see manual controls, white balance, ISO, auto, autofocus and so on. So all this is there. How good the camera is, we will see. So yeah, I would actually say this is already it for the first impressions video. I have to say after using this for a few hours, my main impressions are that the build quality is absolutely amazing and it is running stock Android, which a lot of people like with the newest version. The display is very of very high quality. If it's a, high, a flagship level display, I don't know yet, but I would say at least for the price, it is definitely delivering on a, let's say, me, premium mid-range base. Same goes for the speaker, it doesn't disappoint. There are better ones, of course, but for a bottom firing one, it's still is solid. Performance is on a Snapdragon 6 to 5 level, pretty much, maybe a little bit better. I will have to see about it. that. Battery life should be great. The camera, at least on paper, looks good, and from my first sample shots, seems very promising. But all that and more in the final review, but I can already tell you for 380, you get still one of the few 5.2 inches that seems very premium. Of course, it has a little bit of a harder time. I think so by now because we, I did it not just that long ago. The best phones at around $300 with a 5.2 inch device. I had, to, for example, the Huawei Nova, the Huawei P10 Lite, the Samsung Galaxy A5 2017 and also the Moto G5 Plus. Most of those by now offer a better value, but this one just came out, so even the price should drop. And it seems to be definitely on par, if not even maybe slightly better in some aspects, like for example, just the design and overall quality seem to be on a very high level. How good exactly? That's what we are going to find on in the full review. So check out that. And in case you don't want to miss that, subscribe to the channel, maybe leave a comment on there below and a like. But otherwise, that's it. Bye.